Hi, today we're going to be doing some vector drawing and we're going to work on a project from beginning to end. Um, I'm going to kind of time lapse this so you don't have to sit here and watch me draw the whole thing. But this is a, something you're going to be doing a lot when, if you're in the printing business or if you are a, a graphic artist or whatever, somebody's going to send you something like this. It's low resolution. And they're going to say, oh, that's all I have. I don't know who did it originally. We can't find them. Um, and you have no choice but to redraw it. And uh, I would recommend that you learn to do it because uh, that will help you to retain business. If you say you can't work with something, uh, they'll find somebody who can. So uh, just practice your drawing. And uh, this might look a little daunting for a beginner, uh, but uh, let's draw it. And um, you'll see that it's much easier than you might think. It begin a drawing by looking at your uh, original and uh, sort of take note of what it's comprised of. This is a two-color uh, lion, obviously, white and black. And if you uh, kind of look at it, you'll see that it consists of a one big black shape, which is the outline of this. This one black object here on his cheekbone and this eye, and the rest of it is a white shape. You can see that if this uh, shape was w drawn in white, it would complete the, the overall object. So we're going to draw it as one, two, three, four separate vector shapes. And let's get started. I'm going to click my F12 key, which for me is the outline pen shortcut. Uh, might be something else on your system, but anyway, opening the outline pen, uh, you'll get this message when nothing is selected. If you change the outline, it's going to be uh, that default from now on, which is what I want. Okay. So I've selected orange as the color of my pen and a two point uh, outline. Reason for that is because orange is easy to see against black and two points is thick enough that I'll be able to see what I'm doing. Now I got my uh, Bezier tool selected and the way I draw this type of shape is not to try and do the Bezier all the way around. All I do is put a node on every point where your drawing changes shape. So you can sort of see what I'm doing here. I'm going to follow this curve around here and uh, put a node there. Put a node here. And I'm going to come around to about there, which is where I think I can probably draw a decent arc. Come to here, and you can see it changes direction again, just slightly. But because of that, we want nodes there. Obviously, this one would be a node here. This is an S-curve, but uh, I'm going to just use a node on either end. We'll uh, explain that in a minute. Node here, node here. Then I'm going to finish out my vector shape like this. I'll fill it with orange. Orange. <laughs> orange, sorry. Um, get rid of my outline. I'm going to right click up here on my no outline. And now I can shape it out once I convert these straight lines to curve lines up here. And I want to keep the nodes as cusps for now. So you can see I can shape this out just by dragging the line up there. I'm not going to be able to do that for the whole curve because it's too sharp. So in this case, I'm going to use my arrows to finish that up. I'm just doing this rough because it's for a video. Uh, I'm going to shape that out there. What I'll do is uh, give this a transparency like this. Transparency right here, this little wine glass. And I'll make it a little darker on this Thing. So I, now I can see what I'm doing, and I can also see my orange. So I'll go back to my Bezier. 
or uh, excuse me, I'll go back to my shape tool and continue shaping this out. Now here's the S curve. So for that you can't you can't just drag the line, you have to use the arrows. So I'm going to use the arrows to shape the S out like this. Okay. Now I'm not really trying to make this perfect because it's just for the video, so. But shape this, remember this little thing right here where it took another little turn? Shape out each segment until you get it all done. Right there, there's a little bit of a. Okay, now I'm gonna do that. Do this. These are just slight curves. Okay, now that I've got it roughly shaped out, so these should be smooth curves like these here. So I'm going to go up here to my, my uh, toolbar, make nodes smooth. Okay, after you do that, it might jump a little bit. So just keep shaping it out. These should be smooth here. Okay, and the rest should remain cusps, so use your arrows and your line drags to uh, finish it out. Now, for purpose of this video, that's close enough. So, what I'm going to do with this is send it to the back, or you could put it on another layer. I just want it out of here for now. So, now it's behind my... original okay um, we'll draw this accent here I'm gonna kind of time-lapse this now that you know how I draw so we can uh, save a little bit of time Bezier tool uh, you see this sharp curve here you want to use a node in between because it's so sharp okay so that's, okay so that's roughed out once again I'm on a marquee select this and turn it into curves so that I can shape it out. And this is a little going to be a little bit more difficult, but not uh, too hard. Shape it out like this, just like we did before. And uh, you can be as accurate as you want, depending on whether this is for an ad or just for fun, for a website, whatever. But anyway, you can just see what I'm doing here. I'm going to turn it solid again so it'll be a little easier to see. Orange. No outline. And once again, I'll use my transparency tool to make it transparent. About like this and we'll keep them continue shaping it out until we're happy with it like that like that now this is an abstract shape so it doesn't really as long as it looks good Nobody's going to say, oh, well, that uh, looks a little different than the original. Should be fine just the way we are. All right, for this video, I'm going to say this is good enough. Once again, we'll take the shape, the uh, nodes that should be smooth, convert them to smooth nodes, and uh, kind of need to work on this part a little bit more now that it's smooth but that's good enough all right we have an eye here we'll leave that for later the next thing we're going to do is draw a white area this is going to be like a little composite 
by the time we're done. So we'll time lapse that again. I'll draw the white now. Keep in mind when I'm drawing the white, I'm going around where the white is. Pretend the white is a color and follow it all the way around his nose and his uh, whiskers here. Just keep going until you have the whole white shape complete. Fix this first. Okay, there. Um, all right, Bezier tool. And go. Here. Every time it changes direction, you add a node. Okay, now we've completed our shape. I want to make this one blue. Once again, get rid of the outline. And what we have here now is a rough out uh, white shape. Now, this is more complicated because I had to go all the way around his nose and everything. So it's going to take some shaping to get this to look right. Once again, I'm going to marquee select my nodes using my shape tool and make them uh, curves. Now, for this part, I'll start with the uh, easier parts of it, which is like this stuff here. Shape it out. Pretty basic. And here we are back at an S curve. So let's uh, practice that again. Use one arrow to go one way. And the other arrow takes it the other way. Till you have your perfect S. Just like that. Uh, I'll pause this again. And now we have the basic shape done. Uh, except for his face here. So it's time to zoom way in. Because this, this is a little uh, more intricate. Uh, once we're zoomed in, we can continue to shape it out. Let's see if I can time lapse this and uh, get some of this done. So I zoomed in a little more and... Um, you just need to take your time here and keep in mind that no one's comparing yours to the original, but it should be as close as you can get it. And just keep working your way around, getting it as close as you can. And this kind of stuff doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be really close to, to what it was uh, on the original. So, keep working through it. Like I am now. Until you get it pretty close, or at least uh, close at this uh, zoomed in angle here. And convert your curves to smooth when they need to be smooth. Just keep shaping it out. Smooth. Keyboard shortcut for converting a, a single node from smooth to cusp or cusp to smooth is just by clicking your C key on your keyboard. But you want to keep them uh, as cusps until you get it pretty well roughed out at which time then you convert it to a smooth and you might have to adjust it a little more after you do that. Here we're back to an S curve. Let's practice that one more time. Up on this side, down on this side, and shape out your S just the way you want it. And then we'll just move these in here. Once again, this part here isn't as important as the overall shape because as long as it looks clean and close enough to the original, you're going to be fine. And I'll say for this video, this is close enough. So I'm going to send it back. Control, page down. 
put it back behind. Remember, all our stuff is back there that we've been working on. And uh, one last thing I need to do is draw this eye. So we'll zoom in on that and we'll get it done. No outline. Transparent. A little less transparent. And don't forget to convert these to curved lines like this. And shape it out. Right here. this that's all kind of straight there and this uh, once again doesn't have to be perfect but it should be as close as possible okay Good enough. Now, let's zoom out. And we'll move our original over here so that we can look at what we've done. I'm going to remove my transparency from all of this by clicking None. And now we have our lion. So if I want to make it look like the original, I'll take this orange and turn that black. And if you recall, all that is is a giant black shape. And we'll make the blue part white. And then these two oranges should be black. And now we've got our lion uh, redrawn in vector so we can uh, enlarge it to whatever size we want without losing any resolution. If you're so inclined, you can come back in here and work on some of this a little bit more. I'm going to say this is good enough for me. There we go. I'm going to leave it there. And... Uh, Hopefully you've uh, learned a little bit about drawing today, and I want you to uh, try and practice doing this whenever you can, even if it's just for fun. It'll, it'll really help you draw, and uh, as you can see, I went pretty slow on this today, but uh, if you're drawing for a living, you're going to want to speed it up as, as, fa as best you can. So knowing these techniques will help you to do that. And... Um, little bit more work and we'll be done with this practice with these uh, techniques um, learn to study your drawings before you begin so you can know what you want to do and uh, hope your next project goes well <laughs>